Hello and welcome to another episode of the Elite Smart Athletes Lab Rat Series, where I test out different workouts on myself so that you know where to best invest your money and your time on your journey to unlocking your inner athlete. And today we're going to be looking at the My Jump 2 app, which is an app that was designed by Dr. Carlos Salvasori. Excuse me if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Yeah, Dr. Carlos designed this app, as well as many other apps that are designed for athletes and coaches to be able to use to test metrics for sports performance. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you know that I like to measure my progress as I go through different programs and test out different programs. Anyway, I believe that measuring your progress is always important, no matter what level you're at, just to make sure you are doing the right things and you can adjust your programs if you're not seeing progress. So the MyJump2 app costs around 10 pounds on the App Store. Um, I bought it whilst I was still in the UK, but for my American followers and subscribers, that's around $40. Or for my UAE subscribers, that's around 50 dirhams. And in this video, I'm just gonna go through the app quickly, gonna give you a bit of a walkthrough through the app so that you just know what features are there, what's not there. But the main thing that I will preface before we go into it is that you can't measure approach jumps. And an approach jump is essentially where you have a bit of distance to run up before you do your jump. In the NBA and NFL combine, for example, there are different types of vertical jump tests. So there are some where they are allowed a run up of a few meters or a few yards, and then they test the jump. But there are also other tests that they have to do from a standing position. And this app is primarily designed for testing those standing jumps. The side effect of only being able to measure standing jumps is that it's not really entirely accurate for measuring single leg jumps because, you know, it's very rare for you to just be standing and then going off a single leg to jump in the air. You're most likely gonna have a run up, especially, you know, basketball players that follow me. You know, you're gonna be going into the lane, you're gonna go dunk it, or you're gonna go for a layup you're going to have a bit of a speed going into that single leg jump. So um, because it can't measure approach, it's not really that great for measuring single leg. But if you want to measure your two leg or two foot jumps, then it's perfect for that. And the final thing to note before I do go into the app is that there was a 2018 study done about the app where it essentially just kind of looked into the reliability of the results that the app gives you. Because the way that the app works is it uses your flight time and I'll go into that later. But going into the reliability, it said that the app was reliable in terms of the consistency of the results. So you didn't really get a lot of variability between one jump to another. So the app's results are pretty consistent across the board, which means it's reliable in that sense. But when you compare the results to using a different method, so again, going back to the combines, you know, they have that long, that long stick with the rungs on it. It's called a vertex and using a vertex to measure your vertical jump, well then, if you try and compare those results with the app, you're going to see a disparity between the two. And usually the vertex results are higher than the results of the app. So when you see the results on the app, if you do use it, don't be disheartened because it's probably gonna be lower than you expect it to be. And then if you were to then go and test with a vertex, you're gonna get the results that you might expect. So yeah, don't try and compare different methods. Essentially just use a consistent method for measuring your vertical jump. So if you get the app and you wanna use the app, use it consistently for at least that one test and the next test if you wanna compare progress. All right, so now let's just go into the app quickly, have a look around, see what's there, and then I can explain to you some of the features and just how I personally use it. Cause I don't use every single feature in there, but I do use it mainly just to uh, test the vertical jumps of certain, certain things. So let's go into it now. So in the home screen, you can see that it has the different types of things that it can measure. So you've got vertical jump at the top, horizontal jump, force velocity profile, asymmetry test, and repeated jumps. So essentially they are all still relatively self-explanatory. Vertical jump is jumping up and down. Horizontal jump is like a broad jump from as, forward, as far forward as you can go. Um, your force velocity profile, that's essentially just looking at how much force you produce in a certain amount of time, how quickly can you produce force. Um, that's probably more of a scientific test that a coach or a trainer is gonna use rather than maybe someone just training by yourself. Um, a symmetry test, essentially just looking at your body movement, movement quality, um, and I guess it's asymmetry between jumps. So that's probably asymmetry between different sides or jumping in different directions, but that's not really a feature I use. And repeated jumps is, again, looking at the difference between heights if you're jumping consistently, you know, on the spot, maybe for a few seconds, um, and just trying to see if your vertical changes between jumps. 
Now, the main feature that I use is obviously the top one for vertical jump. So if you were to click on it, it gives you the option of CMJ, SJ, CMJ free arms and DJ. Now, personally, it would be helpful if they actually wrote the full, you know, they put the acronyms in there with the letters, but it would be helpful if they actually put the full words in there just so you actually understand it. But I'll explain it to you. So CMJ means counter movement jump. So that means you are allowed to start from a standing position, you're standing tall, you go down and then you jump up. Uh, and that's a counter movement because you go down and up, which is called a counter movement. Um, the SJ is called a squat jump, but it could easily be described as a non counter movement jump. So instead of starting tall, going down and then jumping, you actually start from the bottom position and then just jump straight up. So no counter movement, you don't go down then up, you just start from the bottom and jump straight up. So that's a squat jump. So if you need that, that's a way to measure that. CMJ free arms. Okay, so with the first two, CMJ and SJ, you're supposed to keep your hands on your hips the whole time whilst you do those jumps. You're not allowed any arm swing. And you know, if you have done any sort of vertical jump training before, you'll know that an arm swing does contribute to vertical jump height. So CMJ free arms essentially is just the version where you're allowed to have an arm swing. So you're allowed to start from tall, go down and up, but you're also allowed an arm swing into it. And finally, a depth jump, the so DJ depth jump, is where you would jump off of a platform, off a box maybe, jump down onto the floor, then jump back up and land. Um, so yeah, that's what the four types of vertical jumps that it can measure. And essentially, if you click on any one of them, so I'll just click on one of them, um, so CMJ free arms. Oh, show you my room now. <laughs> so essentially, you can see the camera right here. But essentially, you just set up the camera, and you know you can just see what is going on um, through there. You would press record, and it records it in like super slow mo, and then you can see your vertical jumps. Now, when you click on the menu tab at the top, you now you can see that uh, you have a profile here, and you can see your history of jumps. Um, which is a very cool feature because then you can see whether you're improving or not from uh, test to test. So um, typically, obviously, I use the vertical jump and I can see for CMJs, I haven't done them for like almost a year now. Um, so you can see where it's improving. So that first, that one right at the bottom is the first CMJ I did. It says 12.68, which doesn't really seem that great. I would have thought it was more. Um, but again, you know, obviously you can't compare it to the Vertex. That's why that study information is important. It's important to know for context so that you don't get disheartened in your training. Um, so the first one doesn't have any sort of color next to it, right? But then all the rest of them have these big circular colors. And essentially it's just to show that you work fatigued. It's, it's really weird. I don't know the science behind how it works, but essentially it uses these, this traffic light system to identify whether you did a fatigue jump or not. So first jump, you know, it was obviously just the first one. So you won't be fatigued. Then it says second one wasn't fatigued. Third one wasn't fatigued. And you can see the dates on the right, um, you know, 2nd of October, 2020. Um, so those bottom three, 2nd of October. Then you can see there's another three, um, 16th of October. This is why I was doing fat jump like, um, so yeah, 16th of October. Um, and the numbers, you know, the numbers increased slightly, um, but again, there were no fatigue in those jumps. And then you can see, you know, second, 16th and 30th. So these are two week um, gaps in between. Now on those ones that I did on the 30th, it said two of them weren't fatigued, but the, the one in the middle, that 12.7 inch with the red circle, it said that was a fatigued jump. So it told me, the app actually told me to take a little break. Um, I know it was a while ago, but I do remember this because I was really confused as to why it was having these um, things. So yeah, it told me that I was fatigued while I was jumping. So take a longer break before doing the next jump, which I did. And then obviously you can see that the jump went back up. It still wasn't as high as, you know, some of my other ones on this, but yeah. Um, now, obviously you can see the different types of jumps, as I showed you before, it has CMJ, um, the so counter movement jump, the squat jump, counter movement jump with three arms and uh, the depth jump. And if you just slide across, you know, you can see the four dots at the bottom of the screen, you slide across and you can see your records for all the different types of jumps. So you see the squat jump, depth jump I've never actually tried to record, so that's why there's nothing there. And the CMJ three arms is the one that I use the most because I just feel like that's the most realistic one that I'm actually that actually translates towards a game and it's the one that 
is actually used in a lot of the tests that are done in the combine. So I don't know, I'm quite obsessed with combine tests. So um, yeah, I try and mimic them as closely as possible. So yeah, that's the one I use. And obviously you can see the numbers here for CMJ free arms are a lot higher than the ones without the free arm. So yeah, obviously CMJ free arms, the counter movement jump with the arm swing, um, you know, arm swing contributes to vertical jump if you can't, if you didn't know that already. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the app there. You can see um, all the results. And one thing I didn't mention was that obviously because it uses your camera, when you film it, it automatically exports it to your photo library. So then you can see the footage of you jumping and I'll probably insert a clip here of some of my recordings of me jumping from different tests. Uh, but yeah, it just does it in super slow-mo and you can see it and um, the way that it works is when it records as well, this is actually, I probably should have um, included that, but um, I'll probably just do a, do a test one again. I'll show you my room again. So let's say CMJ free arms, right? I'll start recording, right? I'll just let it run for a bit and then I'll press stop. And then it asks you to select where the takeoff is. So then you press takeoff um, and you can use the arrows to like move the frames forwards and backwards. I probably should have moved the camera a bit so that you could actually see that. But essentially you can see me pressing the buttons forwards and backwards and you can see the um, blue line at the bottom moving forwards and backwards as I move. Or you can just drag it across um, and there you can see the, the image moving. So yeah, and then you can see the takeoff or uh, landing. You essentially just point out to where the takeoff is, press takeoff, then you press landing. You enter any loads. So maybe if you're jumping with like a weight vest, you can enter how heavy it was, and then you click next. And obviously, um, well, actually, I always put zero in here. Um, and then obviously, you know, it's come up with the jump height at zero because there was no jump there. Um, so yeah, uh, you see, but it's, it's interesting that it's come up with 1,118.34 newtons of force, even though I was, there was no one jumping. So. But yeah, here you can see that it shows jump height, flight time, velocity, so how quickly, and the power produced in uh, in the jump and the force produced in the jump. So quite interesting metrics. And then you can either discard it. Um, so if you discard it, then um, obviously it won't save the record in your history and it won't save the footage. Um, or you save it and then, you know, it will uh, save both. So yeah, you can do both there. Um, discard it discarded data can't be recovered of course um, but yeah obviously I don't need that in there so that's pretty much how the app works and it works quite similarly for all the other different types of jumps obviously I mainly use it for vertical jump I haven't used it for any of the other four yet so you know maybe one day I will start using it for that but you know for now just vertical jump so a bit of insight because I know I mention it a lot in a lot of my reviews I'm testing vertical jump it cost me 10 pounds I've had the app for close to a year now so you know it was a very useful purchase for me personally. And I know a lot of people like to know how high they are jumping, but in context, you know, if you're an athlete and you're playing a sport, your vertical jump numbers don't really matter. If you can dunk it and you can dunk on people, you know, no one cares how high you're jumping to dunk on people because it's more impressive to have that footage of you actually dunking on somebody rather than, oh, I've got a 36 inch vertical, but you don't know how to use it in game. So yeah. Um, but if you are interested in measuring, then this is a useful app to use, a useful tool to have. So um, it would be a good investment, I reckon, and it's not too pricey. So yeah, shout out to Dr. Carlos against Alba. Sorry, apologies if I'm saying his name incorrectly. But yeah, very useful invention, and um, I'm definitely going to continue using it. So yeah, thank you for following this video. Just giving you a bit of insight into the tools I use when I'm making these workout reviews and yeah, just giving you more tools, more ideas on how to improve your own performance and optimize your performance in game and beyond. So I appreciate you watching. Please like, follow, subscribe. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore when it comes to all that, but yeah, just, you know, support the channel, help it grow and um, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm active on both of those platforms. I follow up, subscribe up, like the video and until next time, stay blessed.